Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make this R2-D2 design. And this was not de not designed by me, it was designed by Evelyn the Nerdy on Instagram. Um, I forgot to charge my other phone so I could bring up her Instagram, but I'll leave her Instagram and her YouTube and her Etsy down in the description so you can check her out because she is an amazing designer who makes so many cute Star Wars figures. I also know she has BB-8 on her channel and I might make that soon because it's like super cute. But thank you so much Evelyn for letting me make a tutorial for your design. I think it's so cute. Um, yeah, anyways, so this is a design, um, this guy's not exactly correct, so I made this, because I was just trying to make it from the photo, and I realized, and then I sent her, like, a photo of me making it, and she was like, you're supposed to attach it, like, put everything in as you go, and I was like, what, because I, I always attach things afterwards, it's just what I do, so, then this was try to, where I attached everything as I went, and so this is the version I'll be showing you today, there's not too many differences, it was literally just me figuring out where everything goes on the actual band, so, yes. But I think that is it. I don't really have too much to say about this design. It's super cute, and like I said, thank you so much for letting me make it, Evelyn. But, yeah. So I did do a band count. So band-wise, it is about 180 bands in total. I didn't split it up into colors. If you want to see it more split up, you probably have to check the description, because I, I forgot to calculate it, so I just did quick math, and I also did that math in my head, so it might be wrong. But... Yeah, so it's not too band heavy, but if you want the full band count, I would check the description. I also know that someone's going to say, oh my god, I want to make him, but I can't because I don't have the colors. That happens on so many of my tutorials. But I just want to say, if you search up droids that look like R2-D2 on um, like Google, a load of different droids come up, and he actually is done in like so many different colors. I saw one that was like black and yellow. I know that one's one in the show. And I mean, they're not technically R2-D2, they have like slightly different names, but it's the same basic droid shape, so if you Google that, you can find like different droids. If you, you know, maybe you don't have the colors to make this one, you can make a different one. So yes, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't think, I think I already said that this design isn't too hard. Um, if you made a couple of my designs, you should be okay, because it's not that bad. It's just me explaining is going to be interesting, but that's always interesting. <laughs> um, so for the colors I'm going to be using today, for the red slash blue in the sky, I'm going to be using gold, because I found one that was gold on Google. And then the silver and the white will stay the same, it's just wherever there's red, it'll be gold. And there's a couple things we have to kind of make before we start. So, as you can see I have these like beads, right there and right there. And I'll be using these beads today, but if you don't have beads, you can use wrap bands. I'll show you how to do the wrap bands in a second, so they would be like these. Um, for the eye, you can use a wrap band as well. Also for the eye and the... Well, not this bead. This bead should actually be on a white band. So you're going to want to have one of whatever color you want this band to be on a white band, and then one on whatever color you have the, um, the red in your droid. And then you're going to want the eye to be on the color of the whatever the red is as well. And then you're going to have two clear bands. And if you don't have clear, you can use a different color. Like I said, you can get creative with the colors. Um, two clear bands on white bands. And I'll show you how to do the wrap band thing. So any of these things you can make with wrap bands. So I'm going to be making these two silver wrap bands. But all you're going to do is you're going to take a band. Wrap it four times on your hook. Oops, that did not, did not go well. Okay, so that's four times, and then you'll get another band, and you'll pull it through everything on your hook. And that is all you do. So say you didn't have a eye bead, all you would do is wrap a black band around your hook four times, and then pull whatever color you want for the gold in your droid through, and it'd be the same thing. Same thing with the buttons. And I'm going to do that one more time, because I need two of these silver things, so... I usually wrap it around twice, and then grab both loops. Wrap it around again, and that'll be four times. And then I'll just pull a band through. And I have my thing. So like that. So you're going to want to get all this. Like I said, if you don't have whatever color you want for these, I would just use wrap bands. So to do the same thing I did just in the colors you want. And yeah, same thing for the eye. Except for, for the eye, you actually might be able to, because it's a little bigger, use two, ra use two like double bands and wrap them four times. That might look a little better for the eye. But yes, so you're going to want to get all those, and then come back, and get your colors, and yes. So I'm going to start getting started with this guy. I don't have, I don't think I have anything else to say. So we're going to start with the, 
Uh, whatever color you want for the blue and this droid, which for me today is gold. And we're gonna get started. So we're gonna wrap a band around our hook three times, so two, three, and then this whole starting bit is gold, by the way, so I'll, I'll let you know when we switch colors. And then we're gonna pull the band through everything on our hook, put both ends back on, and then we are going to push the back one over the front one. So now we're going to be putting, um, it's five more bands in this cat band, so if you already know what I'm doing, you're going to put six bands in total. But if you don't know what I'm doing, I'll keep explaining. So now we're going to go back into the cat band, pull a band through just the cat band, so not this last band. Both ends back on your hook, and then push the back one over the front one, and then you push that loop from last time over as well. We're going to do that exact same thing we did four more times. My camera is kind of falling. Oh no. I should have paused to fix it, but there we go. So once again, we're just going to go back into the cat band. Pull a band through just the cat band. Put both ends back on your hook. Push the back one over the front one. And then push the loop from last time over as well. Like I said, we do the six times in total, so I have to do that three more times, so same thing. I'm just doing it slow so you can see. So that's four. Five. I don't know if it's focused. And six. So once we have six loops in the cat band, first we're going to make sure we have six loops, so we'll just count, so we have one, you always start counting the one on your hook, so you count one, two, three, four, five, and six, and don't count this across band, you can kind of tell it's the band going horizontally across, but it might look like a loop to you, so just make sure you don't count that one. So once we've made sure we have six, all we're going to do is we're going to get another band, and <laughs> this is all twisted. And instead of going back into the cat band, we are going to go into... Okay, we're also switching to silver. I, was just... I had a flash, so yeah. So now we're going to switch to silver as well as... So we're not using gold anymore. Well, not yet. Um... But yeah. So now, once we've made sure we have six loops, we're going to go... Instead of going back into the cat band, we're going to go into this first loop here. And like I said, this, hor this band that's going horizontally might look like a loop, but it's not. So we're going to go into the first loop, and this stitch is done a little bit differently because we're switching colors, so instead of pulling it through just the loop, we're going to pull it through everything on our hook, and then put the back one over the front one, and we're going to put a C-clip on this one. So we don't do that every time we switch colors, Just I think it's just this first time we switch colors. Yes. Okay, I'm going to fix my camera because it's like slowly falling, and then I'll be back. Okay, I fixed my camera. I also picked up bands. So this row we are going to be increasing everything, and what that means is basically we'll be doing two stitches in every loop until we get back to the C-clip. And we're doing it in our silver color. I'll let you know when we switch colors, because like on the last row of the head we do a little bit of a, a pattern, so I'll let you know. But yeah, for now we're just going to be using silver. Or whatever color you're using for silver. So like I said, we'll be increasing. So this loop already has one stitch in it, but because we're increasing we're going to go back in and do another stitch. We just make two, and then we just keep doing this, so we just go into each loop and we make two stitches in each loop until we get back to the C-clip, because that's an increase. So one, two, and that would be an increase, and because we're increasing everything, we just do this all the way around. So we're just putting two stitches in each, so one. Two. Just keep doing this. Kind of going off camera. I think my camera was falling because I have the charger plugged in because I kind of forgot to charge my phone before I film, which was a oops, but oh well. Yeah, we're just increasing, putting two 
stitches in every loop until we get back to the C clip. Okay, so it's kind of easy to tell because we switched colors, but sometimes when you switch colors, this loop, um, let me show you after I finish. This, the horizontal loop on this band is going to look kind of like a loop, but it's not. And it's kind of easy to tell because our C-clip is on the actual top of the loop, so don't go into that tiny loop. We're just going to go into the C-clip, or the band that has the C-clip on it, make a stitch, and then we just move the C-clip up onto this band. And that was it for this row. So after the last row, you should have 12 loops, so if we can, we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So for this next row, we are going to be increasing every other, and I'm just making sure where we are because I believe we put the eye on this row, but I'm just making sure, yeah we do, okay. So this row is going to have the eye on it and you're going to want whatever your band with the eye and we're just going to put that off to the side. But yeah, so we're going to be increasing every other stitch. So this one, one, and I also, the band, the, I'll tell you where the eye goes, but yeah, increasing. <laughs> okay, so this first stitch is one, and like I said, we're increasing every other, so we just leave, we don't go back into this loop, so one, and then the next one we do an increase. So one, two. And then, because we just increase, we just do one stitch normal, so we just put a single stitch in this one. So just one stitch. And then in the next one we do an increase. So one, and then two. Like that. And then on this fifth band is where we're going to put the eye band, so if we can, we should, we should have done four stitches, so one, two, three. Okay, I'm just making sure I'm on the fourth loop because on the fifth one we put the eye and also on the eye I forgot to do it but I was just going to do it here we also we have the eye on this band but we also have a band that is wrapped four times so you're going to get a band that you want basically it's this weird thing under the eye so we just wrap a band four times on our hook and then we pull it on to the band that has an eye on it and we're just going to leave it like this for now and then like I said, the eye goes on the next one, so we're going to put our hook through the next loop, and it shouldn't be an increase, so, yeah. And then we just pull, and we just make a stitch with the band that has an eye on it, like that. Oops, it's kind of popping off. It'll be a little weird because there's bands on it, but it should be fine. And then the rest of the way until we get to the C-clip will just be increasing every other. So I just did one single one, so the next one's an increase. So. Two. Then we do a single one again. And then we do an increase. And we do one single, so just with one stitch. All it increases, in case you're confused, is it's just you're putting two stitches in one loop, and then wherever we don't do it increase, you just put one stitch, so it's pretty simple. And the next one we do an increase. Then we do one stitch single and then once we get to the c-clip oh I have one more oops almost missed one oops but once we get to the c-clip we'll just make a stitch on the band that has the c-clip on it and then we'll move the c-clip up to this next band. So after that last row we should have 18 loops so if we count we should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 
And the only thing we other like fancy thing I guess we did this row was we added the ion. So we, you should have something that looks like this. Also when I did the, because the band's technically a different color, I didn't do like a fan, like a color switch or anything. I just did the stitch normal. So yes. Also now we can do this. So usually what I'll do is I'll get half of this band that we wrapped and I'll just shove it over the eye so that way half of it's underneath of it and it just gives us it gives it this weird look like that so now like half of the band we wrapped four times is over it and half is under it like that okay so now for this next row we are going to be uh, okay, so it's a normal row, so we're not increasing or anything anymore. We're just doing one row around normal. But this row, we are also going to be doing this. So it's the last silver row. So it's also the row that has this, um, what do you call it? Like, it's the, the blue bands. I couldn't think of it. Yeah. Also, this row, we'll be adding the bead on that bead. I'm trying not to be confusing, so I'm making sure I'm, like, covering everything. So, the bead goes on the fifth band as well, I think. So, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so it goes on the fifth one. So, we'll just do single stitches until we get to the fifth. Oh, wait, no, we don't. Um, this row, we're also, like I said, every third stitch we do is going to be a color. So, this is the second stitch. So, this third one's a color. Wait, that's not right. Okay, it's kind of weird because of where we start. But for sure, the way I like to think of it, for sure because of how it is, this one's going to be um, the gold color. So then if you count backwards, it's one, two. So technically the first stitch we do this row should be gold. Well, we have the one on the C-clip and then the next stitch will be gold. And I don't do anything, just like I don't do slip stitches or anything to clip. Um, flip colors, we just do a stitch like normal, and then we'll go on to the next stitch. We'll do it just like normal. So the next two are silver, and then on the third one, well, like I said, we do two silver ones, and then on the third one, we switch to gold, but this gold one has the bead on it, so make sure it's your one that has the bead, or the wrap band you want to use as a bead. And then you push the back one over the front one. Like that. So that was a bit confusing. I hope you kept on. But all we did, and I'll tell you at the end what we did in case anyone's confused. So like I'll recap at the end like I did last row. But yeah. So basically all we're doing is every third stitch we do. This is one row normal so we're not increasing. But every third stitch we do is going to be... Um gold so I just did two silver so this third one we're just gonna get a gold band and like I said don't do anything fancy to switch colors just make a stitch and we just keep doing this until we get back to the c-clip so it's just one row with normal stitches or single stitches it's just we on the third ones we're putting gold bands mm. We are almost there. So we just keep doing this. I'm not talking much, too much because I don't feel like it's super complicated, but yeah. So this one's gold. And we just sing silver one. So once we get to the band with a c-clip I usually switch to white at this point so we're just going to go through the band that has a c-clip on it. We are going to get our white band. We're going to pull it through everything on our hook, put both ends back on, and then push the back one over the front one. And then we'll move the c-clip up onto this band. Like that. So now you should have something that looks like this. Um, The eye looks a little weird. That's partially because I use a very big eye. So it kind of does stick out a lot. But... I kind of like, I think it's cute, okay? 
Um, but yeah. So now we're. I'll just recap what we did last row. So last row, we didn't increase or anything, so we should still have 18 loops. So if you can actually have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And then the only other thing we did is on the fifth loop, we added the band that has a bead on it. And then every, like I said, you can see it now. So we did two silver, one gold, two silver, one gold. And the only th weird thing that kind of might have thrown you off at the start is that the second thing stitch we did was gold. And then we just keep doing that. So I hope that all made sense. And yeah, I'm just going to go pick up some white bands because we're switching to white now. Okay, so I forgot to say on the um, last row, but it's actually gotten repetitive at this point. So the last row we did was one row normal, and actually um, we don't do any more increasing or decreasing for a while. We're going to be doing seven rows normal, and that last row we just did was the first one of those. So we have to do six more rows normal, but I'm going to be staying on camera for all of them because we have to add in all these things so yeah so we're not going to be increasing or decreasing so all I'm going to be explaining is like where to place things so yeah um but yeah so like I said this is one row normal but we are going to be adding this row this actually no we're not uh this row is just one more no run row normal with nothing added in so we're just going to go around and we're going to do all we're doing is putting one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C-clip, and because we don't add anything this row, I don't think I'm going to be explaining much. I really hope nobody's lost at this point. Um, I'm trying my best to explain, it's just there's always a lot of adding, and sometimes I have trouble, like, trouble uh, explaining when I'm also like, oh, you gotta add this here, and don't forget to put this in there, and I feel like that's why sometimes in my tutorials, I just added everything in afterwards, it's just easier for me. Even though it would probably be more helpful to you guys if I did add it in as I went. It's just, I get so confused. But yeah. So we're just doing one row, normal. Trying to get back to the C-clip. Three more bands. I also keep knocking my camera, and it's kind of... Keeps nearly falling, but we're doing okay. It's because I forgot to charge my phone this morning, and um, I have the charger plugged in, and I think it's kind of making it fall. Okay, I was just picking up some bands. Almost there. So once we get to the C-clip, all we're going to do is we're going to make a stitch on the band that has a C-clip in it and move it up. And since we didn't do any increasing or anything this row, if you count, you should still have 18 loops. I'm not going to count because I know I have 18 loops, so yeah. Okay, so this next row, it's still one row normal. Like I said, we're doing seven rows like this, so until I say otherwise. Basically, I think until we... Um, it literally is until we stop adding things, we don't decrease, so, yeah. <laughs> but, so this band row, all we're gonna be- oh, my camera's going. Oh, I thought I paused it, I didn't. <laughs> Hold up. Okay, I had to pick up my camera, it just totally, totally went. Um, but yeah, so this row, all we're gonna be doing is one row normal, as well as adding this across band here. So... And we start adding the across band on the fourth loop, so this is one, then two, three, and then this one right here is four, so we're gonna first just make a stitch. And then before we put the back one over the front one, we're gonna get our gold band. We're gonna take off this first loop, we'll put the gold band on our hook, and then we're just gonna push the gold band over the edge, and then push the back one over the front one. And then we're going to pick up this gold band again. We're going to make a stitch. And then we'll push the gold band over. It kind of already goes over. And then you push the back one over the front one. And we just keep doing this for a couple stitches until it's kind of too tight to do it. 
It's usually about four stitches, so this is three, and four. Like that. And then we just do one stitch in every loop until we get back to the C clip, so nothing fancy. Yep. You know, I really don't think my band count is right. I feel like this guy takes more bands, but I feel like I got it wrong, but then again, maybe I might be wrong. No one should trust me to do math, honestly. Almost there. This guy does take a little bit to go around because he does use um, 18. Like there's 18 loops around each time we go around, which is why. You know, there's no way this guy takes 108 bands. It was probably 208. I bet I, I miscalculated somewhere. So that's a whoops. Once again, once we get back to the C-clip, all we're going to do is we're going to make a stitch that has a band that has a C-clip on it and move it up. I also don't know why, but something my cold pan's looking very loose. What happened to you? Oh, it's fine. It's just got loose. Uh, if your gold band looks loose right now, it's just because it's sliding over these back ones. So just make sure it stays in front and you should be okay. So... This row is a lot like the last row. We're not really doing anything. We're just adding the second gold band in. So, yeah. Okay, I just wanted to go make sure of something, but... So we're going to be doing this row as one more normal, and like I said, adding the across band. So we start adding a cross band on the third loop, I think. Yeah, so this is one, two. And then this next one will be where we're adding the across band. So you can set the gold band on your hook now if you want. Then we're just going to make a stitch. And then before we put the back one over the front one, we put this gold loop over. And then we put the back one over the front one. And then we'll just stretch it across the next couple bands to make it tighter. So we just pick up the gold band again. And then before we push the back one over the front one, we push the gold loop over. And then we pick it back up. And we go to the next loop. I think we go one farther than last time, so this is where we dropped it last time, but we're going to go one farther. So it goes across five loops in total this time. So it's a little tighter, but if you can, it goes across one, so you can tell it's on this one first, it's one, two, three, four, five, so it goes across five loops. So from the third to, I think it's the eighth stitch, you put the gold, gold band across. And this top one's a little loose, but we can, like, pull it in later, and it's... It's fine. So yeah, now we're just going to be doing one, like, single stitches the rest of the way around, and we're not adding th anything, so I don't really have much to say. I was kind of worried to do this tutorial, not gonna lie, just because of how much I know I'm going to have to explain. Adding things in. It's always a fun time. But this design is so worth it, like... I honestly, I was so happy when she said I could make a tutorial for it. I was like, oh my god, it's adorable. Thank you. That's why you guys better go check out her channel. Because she's amazing. I love her Star Wars figures. Actually, I think I did in my Etsy shop video when I ordered from the second time. I ordered from her. And I have her Mandalorian figure and her Baby Yoda. Oh, yeah. I'm just stitching around. <laughs> like, I'm just talking about things because I have nothing to explain. I'm just trying to get back to the C-clip. <laughs> it's just a lot of bands. I already know I'm going to get one comment like, There's no, like, you did the math wrong. It's actually, like, 208. And I'm going to be like, I've had it read right in the description because that's always what happens. <laughs> 
Okay, so once we move the C-clip up, we're doing another row normal, to no one's surprise. And, yeah, the bands, these bands might look funky for a bit, but once we finish, they'll look fine. So we're doing one row normal again, but this time, we are adding these clear bands for the next two rows. And it's really simple. Uh, the back, this black band that goes across it, I'll tell you when to add that in. I, I honestly don't know if I did this right. Trying to figure out what Evelyn did was fun. So, yeah. But I think I did it correctly, or somewhat correctly. It looks fine. That's the point. But I'm making sure I'm doing this right. Fourth. Okay, it says on the fourth. So we're going to add it in on the fourth. So this is one. Oh, is my camera not focused? There we go. So one, two, and we're doing one row normal again, like I said. Two, three, and then this is the fourth one, so we are going to add the band that has the clear wrap band on it, or whatever color you want for this thing. Like that. And then the rest of this row is just normal um, single stitches, so not much else to say. <laughs> what the heck did it say? Recording while charging May. May what? <laughs> I'm going to unplug my phone real quick. Yeah, so I unplugged my phone. I had it charging because it was at like a 40% and I know this tutorial is going to be probably a little over an hour. So I was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to like, like, that's a lot of time. So I need, you know, so I need to have it charged, but it just gave me a warning and I don't want to know what the warning was. So I just unplugged my phone. Just getting back to the C-clip. I forgot what we were talking about before I got distracted by my phone warning. Okay, we're almost there. Gonna make it. Okay, so after that last row, um, it should look something like this, and I keep forgetting to say this, but if you count, you should still have 18. We're doing normal rows, so I felt like it was obvious, but you should still have 18 loops at the end of the, each one. And like I said, for this next row, all we're going to be doing is adding this guy on the third loop, I think. So one, two, yep, it goes on this one, so this is two. And then on the third one, we add this clear guy onto it. And then we just do normal stitches around the rest, so <laughs> not much. Just make sure after all these rows you have 18, because sometimes when we put like the bands and stuff on, the stitch that has them, is a little tight, so you might miss it on accident. So just make sure you're not missing it. Just making our way around. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Picking up some bands. I'm almost there. You know, I was editing that video. The video posted before this one. Of like, where to heart start with hook-only bracelets. And my iPad picks up every, like thing of audio, it's like ASMR or something. <laughs> uh. 
It's just funny, I don't know. Just random thoughts while I make it to the end. These are what always happen in these tutorials. So once you get to the end, you're just gonna move up your C-clip. Oops. Accidentally flicked it across. Will not go on this loop, oh my god. There we go. So after this row, you should still have 18 if you'd like to count. But now we're gonna put this black band that goes over it. And I think I forgot to set out a black band, so I need to go grab one. Okay, I got myself one black band. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take our hook out and we're just gonna kinda let it chill. As long as we don't pull on that, it shouldn't come out. And then what we're gonna do is right above, okay, so if you look above the clear band, make sure it's focused. There's the stitch we made right there. We're gonna go from the back and we're gonna come up in the middle of that stitch right there. So, right there. And then we're gonna pull this in to the back. The way I did this for the other guy was I went through the back half of a stitch around here. So we'll just go right here. And I'm still holding onto it in the front. I'm gonna want to get another band. Pull it through everything and then just tie it tight. Ah, my phone. There we go. Like that. And then we're gonna wrap it around these two. And then right, you can see where the stitch is right here. I'm just gonna go through that. Pull it in. And it might not be around him this time. So just pull it around him. And then once again, we'll go through part of the back of one of these stitches. We'll get a white band, pull it through everything our hook, and pull it tight. Like that. And it would have probably popped off while you were tying it, but all you do is you drag half of this loop back over, and ta-da! Weird black thing wrapped around two bands. So that's how I did it. I honestly don't know if you did it differently, but that's how I came up with doing it. So, yeah. So I'm gonna just, just go check something on the pattern really quickly. Okay, so that was actually our seventh row when we finished adding this last cat bed. That would have been row seven. So now we're on row eight, and row eight is decreasing every fourth, but we're also gonna be adding the bead and then these two guys. So, I'm just going to want to get that, and I need to switch because my bead is on the wrong colored bands. It should be on a white band, but I don't know why I put it on a, on a gold band. I wasn't thinking. I should have paused to do this, too. But instead, I didn't. No, off camera, just putting a bead on. We're almost done, don't worry. These are like, there's literally like three rows left, I think. Okay. So on the second um, stitch is where we're gonna put, you're also gonna wanna really ignore these bands. They're kind of annoying, but there's no nothing we can do about them. So just leave them. But on the second band is where we're gonna wanna put the, this, the band that has the bead on it. Or this little colorful bit. I'm gonna put it on the stitch like that, and then the cap band goes on the next band, the one with the silver on it. And we're also decreasing every third, not every third, every fourth. So this was one, two, three. So the fourth one, the next one's a decrease. So we're going to grab the front part of the first loop, and then we grab the back part of the next loop, make a stitch on these, push the back one over the front one, push the other loop over as well, and that's a decrease. And then on the fifth band, we're going to put the other cap band with the, the silver cap band. And that is it for the adding things, but now we're still decreasing every fourth, so this is one two, three, this one's four, so front part of the first loop, back part of the next loop, 
I'll do the next decrease slow so you can see it. I'm just picking up some more bands. We're really close to being done now. Uh, they won't go on my finger right. They weren't cooperating. So, once again, we just count. One, two, three, and this next one's four, so we do a decrease. So you grab the front part of the first loop, back part of the next loop, make a stitch on it. And that's a decrease. One, two. Okay, and then we just go to the C clip. So after that last row, we should have 15 loops, so I'll count with you in a second after I move my C clip up. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15. Okay, so like I said, we just finished our last row. So now we're gonna remove our hook and we are going to stuff him because it closes up pretty fast after this row. So we are just going to get our stuffing. I'm tearing up cotton ball off camera right now because I always use cotton balls, but you could use, um, most people use polyfill, but you can use whatever you have. Some people even asked if we have to stuff them. You don't have to stuff them. I mean, they'd be a little flimsy, but you don't have to. If you don't want to. Um, but yeah. Get in. This guy actually does use a lot of stuffing. Like, usually most of my creations use, like, one cotton ball. He uses, like, two. He's pretty fat. There we go. So... I was looking at my thing off camera and I think I tied this black band a little high but if you don't like where the black band ends up just tie it a little lower inside but I'm actually happy with how he is so we're gonna leave it but yes so now we're just gonna finish closing him up like I said he closes up pretty quickly so this next row we are going to be decreasing every other until we get to the C clip so every other stitch we do is gonna be a, a decrease so this was one normal, so the next one's going to be a decrease. So we grab the front part of the first loop, back part of the next loop, we make a stitch. Then we do one stitch single or normal. And then on the next one we do a decrease. And we just keep doing this all the way around until we get back to the C clip. So one normal, a decrease. Then we do one normal. Then we do a decrease. Then we do one normal. There's a hair in my creation. Oops. And the next one should be a decrease. Then once we get to the C clip, we'll just move it up, make a stitch, move it up. So after that last row, we should have 10, 10 loops, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you don't have 10 and you accidentally decrease one more and have 9, it's not a big deal because we're closing them up, but yeah. So for this next row, we're going to be decreasing everything until it's closed, but it kind of does, like we do kind of have to go around twice, so I'm going to leave the C-clip in so you can see where I'm at, but we're just decreasing everything this row, so... Every single stitch we do is going to be a decrease. I'm not really telling you what I'm doing because it's kind of hard to see how I decrease anyways. But once you get to the C-clip, instead of moving it up, <laughs> you're just going to take it out. But I'm just going to tell you what I'm at in case you're curious after like one row. But you should be at five loops. So one, two, three, four, five. And we just keep decreasing until we're closed. We're almost there. 
His legs are actually pretty easy, so very close to being done. So once you are on your last possible decrease, you can decrease. You're going to pick up the decrease on your hook, pull band through everything on your hook, put both ends back on, push the back one over the front one, and pull tight. And then we just pull this up into our droid. <laughs> Looks a little chubby for some reason. That's a little weird. Should be fine. Uh, I think he just looks chubby because I need to like squish him around. Okay. Yeah, he looks a little chubby, but I should just squish him like this. And he should be okay. Yeah, for whatever reason, before you had the legs, these guys look so short. I noticed that with the other droid as well, so... Yeah. Hmm. I was making sure I had the gold bands on the right one. I don't know why it looks like it should have been one down, but... Yeah. <laughs> Let me go check something real quick. I'm kind of worried. Okay, so I was worried I did them wrong for a second, but after looking at my droids, I think I did them correctly. It's just I noticed that until you add the legs and stuff, you kind of look short. But <laughs> I think we did it correctly. I triple checked my pattern. Did everything like I was supposed to, so I think it's just kind of like an illusion. Because I remember thinking this was the red guy as well. I was making him, and I was like, oh shoot, did I do him too short? But it kind of just looks like that until you had the legs. So I'm going to show you how to make the droid legs. They're not too bad. So the first thing you're going to want to do... But yeah, this is how my droid looks right now, by the way. I just realized I didn't really show him to you. But this is how he looks. It's a little stub. But yeah, so you're going to want to get two bands that you're going to wrap them around your hook four times. So that's doubled. We're going to get him again, wrap him around again, that's very tight, and we're going to take two bands, we're going to pull it through this, so, like this, oh my god, this last one won't go over, there we go, like that, put and before you put the other end of this back on, you're going to get a silver band and you're going to wrap it around your hook four times. So one, two. Sorry, I keep going off camera. It's just there's a lot of double bands for this. It's kind of hard. So you're going to put a double band on. And you're going to put both ends back on your hook. So it should look something like this. You're going to want to kind of center the cat band. I can tell mine's not centered. There we go. And then you're going to get two bands again. I'm going to pull through this, and you're going to pull the cap band onto it. This one's back on. And then this one's a little weird, because she did this little thing to kind of puff out this one part of the leg. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get a white band. We're going to double it. We're going to pull through everything on our hook. But we're kind of going to let that first end slide off, and then we're going to put the other end of this doubled band back on our hook, like that. And you're just not going to pull on it too much. And then you're going to get a gold band wrapped around your hook four times. Then we're going to put that other white end back on our hook. And then we're going to get another white band. I don't know why this one's got the middle connected. We'll just get another white band, double it, and pull it through that first half. Like this. So basically we just added doubled um, bands onto the ends of the white band. But if you can't do that, all you're gonna, all, just pull a doubled band through. Like, it's okay. But just... Now we're just going to pull everything onto a doubled band. Well, not a doubled band, two bands. So that's two bands. And then we'll take off the first loop again. Wrap a gold band around four times. Put the other end back on. Get two more bands. Pull it through everything. Just do this again. So we pushed off the first one. Wrap a band around four times, put the other end back on, 
get a doubled band, pull it through. Oops, did something weird. Uh, stop. There we go. that. You can kind of tug on these if they look a little uneven. It's just because the cap bands kind of hold them in place more. <laughs> We're going to do that one more time. So we just remove the first loop, get a gold band, wrap it around four times, and then put the other end back on, and then get two white bands and pull it through. Like that. And that is basically the long part of the leg. So now I'm going to show you how to do this little foot thing. So how I do the little foot thing is a little weird. Um, making sure I remember how to do this. So you're going to want to get two bands. I don't remember. I think you double them. Uh, yeah. You get two bands, you're gonna put them on your hook and double them then you're gonna get two more white bands pull the double bands onto this and now we're gonna flip so either yeah just flip and then get two bands wrap them around and then get two more bands pull the cap band onto that we should have something that looks like this. And then we're going to get two more white bands. We're going to pull it through everything on our hook. Put both ends back on. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pick up both the cap bands again. Because I have a double ended hook, I can flip it like this. But if not, you're going to want to flip it the manual way, I guess. And then you're just going to pull a band through everything on your hook. Put the back one over the front one and then pull tight. And then you'll have this little thing that looks like a droid foot. I honestly don't think I did this part exactly how Evelyn did it, but she said it was fine. So, good enough. And then the way I tuck in the tail, I usually do it the lazy way because you don't really have to tuck it in. You can just put it over and it looks fine. So now we have to tie in the legs. And the legs, you're going to want your droid to be kind of sitting back at an angle a bit. So I usually try to kind of visualize that. And then I'll just go through, usually I'll just go through like, you see how there's like two halves of the band? I just go through the half that's closer to the droid and go through like part of his head, part of the actual droid. And then we'll pull the band through both of these. Oops. Oops, 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 oops. Oh my god, my camera. I don't even know how many times my camera has fallen during this video. Yeah, you just tie those together. And usually I don't tuck the tails in because till I like where the leg is. Because there's been a couple times I do have to redo the leg. So it's just better if you don't have the tail already tucked in. So we'll usually tie the leg in completely and then tuck in the tail. So far it's worked out better this way because I have had to move the legs quite a few times. So I'll usually tie it two times in the front and then one time in the back. Somewhere. Right here we'll tie it. Like that. And we have one leg. So I think I'm going to go off camera to make the other leg. Uh, just because it's a lot of doubled bands. I'm like doing that on camera. But I'll come back to attach it. Just because I feel like it's more the confusing part. But you're going to want to rewind. Watch how I did the leg. Do it again. And then come back with your leg. Okay. I finished the other leg. And I'm going to show you how to attach it. Just because I feel like attaching is like the harder part. I guess. So 
we're gonna go to the other side of our drawer and you're gonna want to make sure you can even kind of see like on the line that you tied the other one and tie this one at the same line that kind of helps because you want them to be even you don't want your droid to have crooked legs <laughs> and tie it on and like I said if you can tell I still have all these things hanging out because I don't like to commit <laughs> to where they are until until all the legs are on. Just because sometimes after I have both of them on, I know this happened with the red one, they were crooked, like they were pretty crooked, and that way you don't have to like go find where the tail is. So it's sometimes just help more helpful just to leave them out until you've committed to where they are. <laughs> And then just tuck them all in. Plus, tucking the tails in to me because this guy's so big is really easy, so. Eh, where'd he go? There it is, okay. So now I usually just look at my droid, and if I'm happy with he where his legs are, I'll start tucking all the tails in. And we just took them all in. Usually this just takes a second. Like I said, he's so big, so you literally just pull them in and they're gone. I'll show you how to tighten this band real quick, because I tried to put it up across more bands, but they look crooked, so that's like the best way to do it, but it does kind of come a little loose, so... I'll show you in a second. I'm really happy with the clothes it's droid. I feel like it's because I like the color yellow. So he's gold. So like that. The sad thing is he doesn't really stand because he's kind of flopsy. Like floppy because the legs aren't strong. I mean you could probably maybe put wire in the legs and then he would be able to stand. But So this top one's a little loose because we didn't go across all the way. But I noticed that if you go across too many it gets too like tight so what I usually will do is I'll just pull it into him more and then it kind of holds it like that and it doesn't really come loose so yeah yes I don't know if this eye I put on him is too big I just kind of like how it looks it's so big okay so the last thing we have to do is this front thing I'm just gonna make sure I remember how to do this correctly. Okay. Okay, I do. So what we're gonna do is we're going to get more white bands. Oops, I just dropped them everywhere. So we're gonna get two and we're gonna wrap them around our hook three times. So one, two, three. And we're gonna do that again. And then we're gonna get two more bands and we're gonna pull it through this cat band. Um, yeah. Then we'll put both hands back on our hook. We're going to want to do that again. So we're going to get two bands. Wrap around our hook three times. Get two more bands. Pull it onto this band. Like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get two silver bands next. Well, we're doing them one at a time, not at the same time. We're going to get one silver band, we're going to double it. We're going to pull it through everything. And then both ends back on. And then we're going to get the next silver band. We're going to double it. And we're going to put both ends back on. And then we're going to get one white band. We're going to pull this onto that white band. And now we're going to attach it to our droid. This thing's kind of coming loose again. I think I had to tie it in last time. But this one's really easy to place because you just come right into the center of your droid where you want the third leg to be, I guess. And you just tie it in. Like that. And then hide the tail. And then the last thing I do to make it look a little more rounded right here is 
I'll pick up both the cat bands. And then I'll get one more white band. Pull through everything on my hook. And then I'll just tie them. So basically I just tie the cat bands together. And then I kind of tuck in the tail the lazy way like before where I just kind of put it over the... The... Over the thing. It just it holds nicely. And there we go. So you can see this came loose again. If it keeps coming loose, you can actually tie it down. So I might do that. It's just it doesn't work out if you tie it across one more band. I've tried. It did not go well. So what I would do is I would either tuck it in very well or I would tie it in to the creation. So you just pick up the gold band, you pick up part of the droid, you just tie it, and then if you tuck the tail in, you shouldn't be able to see this at all. And then it'll hold nicer if that top loop keeps becoming a problem for you. Uh, like I said, I did try to pull it across one more loop a couple times, and it just, it was just way too tight, and then he just starts like getting deformed, and to me that is worse than if you just tie it in after, so... So that is it for this tutorial. Uh, I hope you liked it. I hope your droid turned out good. I feel like this dude's eye, I don't know why, is sticking up so much and it looks so... I'm gonna have to mess with that. But I hope your droid turned out okay. I hope you think he looks good. Um, if you make any of these droids, definitely tag me and Evelyn. I want to see them. <laughs> and uh, I was trying to think if I had anything I wanted to show you. And I have one thing. It's just I put it away and that's why you hear everything you hear because I'm looking for them but I should have this design out before Valentine's Day I made a mini heart design so I just wanted to show you that really quickly but yes I hope your droids come out okay and yes share them with me and Adeline subscribe if you want to see more tutorials from me and yeah I think that's it I don't have much to say I feel like I wrap this up fast but yeah bye <laughs>